Well, hello and welcome back, or welcome to those of you tuning in for the first time to Hope Revealed. I'm your host, Matt Crump, and I come to you every Tuesday with episodes of Hope, Help, and Health. You can expect guests that give us great information and insight in the world of business, health, and personal experience, all presented to you as a way to find a Hope Revealed. As a person myself who's been battling stage four cancer, I wanted to bring a platform to you that would specifically bring hope as well as help. That can be done through our special guests, information I've been able to locate, and information from emails and messages I receive from you, our followers. You can always email us here at community at godsgotthis.love for questions, comments, or content. On today's episode, we're going to dive deep into life and a hope-revealed moment through the life of a very special guest. Welcome to Hope Revealed. Well, hello, my name is Rodney Flowers, best-selling author, keynote speaker, and resilience trainer. And my claim to fame is I've developed a process that I've used in my books, trainings, and seminars to help people change the game in some area of their personal or business life. Hey, everybody, this is Matt, and welcome back to Hope Revealed. I'm super excited to be here with my pal, Rodney Flowers, who we have just had such fun getting to know each other. And if y'all knew some of the stuff we talk about off camera, holy smokes, we would have <laughs> we would have footage for years to talk about. It'd be hilarious. So anyway, Rodney, I appreciate you coming here to Hope Revealed today. Hey, man, I'm glad to be here, man. And, and it's an honor to, first of all, just to have met you. Uh, oh, I appreciate it. Know that you're from, you know, my hometown and, you know, my stomping grounds. And That's right. to be able to, you know, connect with you in this forum, you know, with both of our stories, have so much in common, and uh, it's just an honor, man. And I uh, love the work you're doing in the world. So oh, happy man. to be here, man. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm super excited as well. I mean, even that um, well, we didn't know each other if it weren't for the uh, the platform of LinkedIn where we where we really found each other. And and uh, oddly enough, as as Rodney just talked about, we're from the same places. And uh, he had some amazing things happen in his life and he had a very traumatic thing happen in his life which is part of the reason why we're talking today and uh, really where some of Rodney's story uh, started uh, from uh, an injury he had while here in uh, the Fayetteville Cumberland County area actually it was in in Lumberton where it happened right but um, we'll get to that in a little while but Rodney there's a lot of things you're doing now and what are some of the things that you've got going on in your life uh, at the moment I know you're you're helping folks in lots of different ways and part of that is through uh, the example of your fight and your passion in life. Uh, you've been, well, were in a wheelchair for a long time, like 18 years, right? That is correct. You're not in a wheelchair. No, I'm not. And it was no drug, right? It was not some pill they gave you and said, oh, look, magic pill, you can start walking again. This was a mindset, a, a devotion, a thought process, a, a drive of your own, a faith in God, all these things together. And uh, I mean, tell me a little bit about that and, and some of that that's driven you into where you're at today. Well, Matt, it's, it's just what you said. It was a process. It wasn't a pill. It was a process. Right. And uh, I didn't realize it was a process at first. Believe me. I mean, I was <laughs> mad at the world, mad at God and everyone in the world. And, uh, you know, when I look back on that process and everything that I went through, it was a training ground, you know, training my heart, training my mind, training my body to put me in a place where I can be that example uh, and, and understand the tools that are necessary to overcome, which is what I do now. I've written a book called Get Up, and it, it is a, it's a book about how you, you pivot out of or change the game you know, when you're in a dip, you're in a, a traumatizing or very difficult challenge or situation in life. How do we overcome those things, right? And it's all about how we respond and the mindset that we create and, 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 and execute when we're in those types of circumstances that allows us to really, you know, ex experience the success or that desire, or that thing that we're after in life. And, and for me, it was walking again, right? It was, it was getting out of the wheelchair after the doctor said I would never get out of the wheelchair. But it was so much more than that, Matt. It was, it yeah. was being a leader, being an example of what's possible when we put our minds to it. Being an example of, you know, you can change the game in wherever you are in your personal or business life. Uh, and I've developed some tools that I use to help people do just that. And that was the 
the, the greatest reward for me, you know, I mean, I am walking and I'm grateful and thankful for that. But but what has come out of this situation is to be able to help people, to serve people. And I found a, a true purpose greater than football, greater than anything that I have imagined in life. And uh, it has served me well. It continues to serve me well. Uh, it continues to be challenging in my life, which is, yeah. which is good because I'm c- constantly growing and learning. And uh, I'm in a place that I, I, you know, I never thought that I would be in, not only out of a wheelchair, but just that example and, and leader for, for others on, on what's possible. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and for those that are, are listening or watching today uh, that don't know Riley Flowers, don't know the story that we're alluding to, um, take us back to a moment when you're a kid in high school and you're all jazzed up to go against, uh, you know, the best team around the area, which was the South U Tigers. Um, Oh, you're giving him too much credit, bro. <laughs> way, 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 way too oh, much credit. All right, all I right, have right. to jump in here. You know, the Pirates. <laughs> We're the best team. All right. And I think we proved that that, that year, all right? <laughs> I, give, I give you that. I give you that. So, obviously, you can see, folks, there was some, there was some stuff going on. There's a lot of rivalry between the teams like that back then. So, you're jazzed up because of this rivalry. There's all stuff going on. You're getting ready to go into this game. Tell me about those moments prior and and then after well it was like this man I, I was lined up on the right side of the field and as the ball was kicked out I kicked off i ran down the field as fast as i could and as i approached my opponent's 40 yard line i seen the kick returner heading towards my side of the field and it felt like i was running like the wind and then i made contact with the runner boom i felt the runner go down i too went down something didn't feel right about this hit. It felt like all of the energy and power just literally jumped out of my body. Mm. I fell to the ground, unable to brace myself. And then I realized I could no longer feel any of my extremities. Right then and there. I tried to get up. Confessionally, my brain started repeatedly going through the process of getting up, but my body wasn't responding. I couldn't get up. I heard people shouting and applauding. My best friend and teammate Randall was celebrating. He said, good hit, man. That's what I'm talking about. Good hit. But then he realized something was wrong. He reached out to help me. But before he had a chance to grab me, the coaches and trainers stopped him and yelled, don't touch him. Don't move him. He could be hurt badly. I began to panic as I recognized the look of panic and fear in the faces of the coaches and trainers who came to my aid. (laughs) The coaches attempted to calm me down, but reality began to set in and tears poured down my face as I came to the fact that regardless, Matt, of how much I tried, my head was the only functional body part I could move and feel. Mm. Rushed me to the hospital. Did, you know, numerous, numerous tests. And then early the next morning, just as the sun was beginning to shine through the window of the intensive care unit, a team of neurologists visited my bedside to pass along my diagnosis. My diagnosis was quadriplegia. I was completely paralyzed. I had no movement or sensation in any of my extremities. And the doctor said I had a 92% chance of remaining this way Mm. for the rest of my life. What did that make you feel like, bro? Not even just there, but on the field. You're laying on the field, a young, young man, full of life. The fear, I would think, that overwhelming sensations of I can't move. What what was that like? It was like death. That's just the best way because I felt number one, life was over. I knew it was a spinal cord injury, and I knew at that time there was no cure for spinal cord injuries, and so I felt that life was over for me. There was all my hopes and dreams, you know, thoughts of being an adult. I mean, I was a kid. I just I had just got my driver's permit like all of those you know you you think about 
when you get grown, when you graduate school, you get your own job, you get your own house, what that's going to be like. Like your 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 whole every day, you're you're waiting. You know, you're you're focused on. You know, I can't wait till I be an adult. You want to be an adult, and make your own decisions, and be independent, and make your own money, and just be an adult. Yeah. Because you feel like that's the cool thing. You know, you you know, a teenager can't wait to be grown, right? <laughs> right, right, right. I just felt like I would never experience any of that. My life was just going to be over and. Everything that makes life life and great, I wasn't going to get any of that. That's what it felt like. It, it felt like dying would have been a better option at that point. Mm, I can understand that. I also just have a hard time thinking about my son. You're probably 15 or 16 years old and at that time frame. Um, as a father, I could only imagine what it feels like watching your son. Um, I mean, I, I have issues in my own life that I have to deal with. I've had to face my own um, mortality and uh, still do. And I understand some of those feelings. Now, I'm fortunate that I still can move all of my body parts. <laughs> um, but there's other things that are paralyzed or were paralyzed, especially when they say you have cancer. That's paralyzing. Absolutely. Uh, nowhere near your tragedy. But um, I, I can understand some of the feelings for sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, brother, you, I mean, obviously we're sitting here talking and, and you're moving around and stuff like that. And uh, I, I wonder, 18 years, years in a wheelchair, 18 years. What do you do at 18 years? You just, did you just say, this is it. I'm going to be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. Uh, did you just operate it with your head? Did you finally get some mobility in your hand that you could move your hand? I mean, what, what, what's up? What happened? Well, I mean, things started, you know, my recovery started with very, very small recovery. And what I mean by that is, you know, I remember being in the hospital. It was Lennox Baker Children's, they had me in a children's hospital. Um, and so I remember going to physical therapy there. And I walked into physical therapy. Well, I didn't walk in. I was rolled into physical <laughs> therapy there. And, uh, you know, they would ask me, what's your goal? And I was always tell them, my goal is to walk again. I want to walk out of this hospital. I want to walk. Every time they ask me, what is your goal? I want to walk. And they would look at me like, dude, like, you can't, you can't squeeze two fingers together to pick up a napkin. Like, how are, how are you going to walk again? Like, you need to. Focus on something that's a little bit more realistic. But all I could see was walking. And so they would work with me and they would put these electrodes on me and they would probe me and stick me with hot, cold, you know, sharp, dull objects to try to see what type of you know feeling I had, you know, what type of recovery. And one thing we noticed is that, you know, like they, they would do this for months. And it came a time where one of my fingers would, would twitch, right? I could try to move it and it, it would twitch. And that was a big win for me because what I would do is I would take that and I would go back to my room and I would focus on twitching my finger for like 200 times a day, every day, right? Wow. Sometimes twice a day. And I remember one time, like my toe, I couldn't move my leg, but for some reason, this little toe down here would, 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 would move. It would, it would twitch. And I said, okay, I'm going to twitch that toe 200 times, times a day, every day. Right. And then, you know, I, I got some return. So my, my injury was a C5, C6 injury. And that's a very high cervical injury. But what it meant is that my function sort of stopped mid my chest. And so I had movement in my shoulders and so I could pick up my arm a little bit, but that fine motor movement in my hands, I didn't, I didn't really have. And so, you know, they had to put me in a, in a, in a sling, so to speak. Like I had to really like, they had to push my chair inside. It, it looked like a squat rack. <laughs> and inside this rack, they would have, uh, you know, this, this shoulder strap that would hang from this rack and they would put my shoulder in it. And I had a little bit of movement on my bicep and they would put a brace on my, my, my wrist to hold my wrist straight. And then it would bend the fork and put the fork inside that brace. And so if I flex my bicep while I was in this spring, I could get my hand to my mouth. Right. Wow. I fed myself. Right. And so I would do those types of things over and over and over. And I noticed that those things would get stronger. I mean, they weren't functional, but that twitch would get stronger. Or that movement in my bicep would get stronger. The shoulder was getting stronger. And so I just kept doing those things over and over and over. And a lot of prayer. And I found that things would slowly but surely, you know, come back for me. 
And it just took a long time. And so there's 18 years where just taking those little bitty successes and starting to build on top of them. So it's really like a baby really, you know, in its infant state, learning how to walk again, learning how to crawl, learning how to hold the bottle. I mean, it's very, very similar to that. And that process for me to get up to standing straight and tall with crutches, that took about 18 years. That is such amazing fortitude and, uh, and strength on your part to be able to not give up during that process. Um, I wouldn't blame you if you did. Um, I applaud you because you didn't. However, there are a lot of people in the process of the, of the maybe somebody that's even in a chair today watching or listening today, it's hi highly probable, um, that don't have that drive. I mean, you're a kid, 15, 16 year old kid. You didn't get to go out and do, I'm 18 year old guy now, I'm a man now, I'm 21 year old man, I'm gonna do these things, do this stuff, and 25 year old guy, you know, you didn't get to do all the things you had in your mind, these, you know, I'm a guy too, so we have these milestones as a kid where you wanna go, and you didn't get to do some of those things the way you wanted to, for sure. Um, so you, you didn't get some experiences that you would have wanted to have had, right? So some of those experiences in my mind could have been like, well, he, he did this, he did this. I can understand where he'd have some of the drive to do this and do that. You didn't have some of those things. So where did you get that drive? Where'd you get that, uh, that ability to press into places that you didn't know were there to press into? Well, because like I said, it started with a process and I, I learned early on that that path that I wanted to take, that was over. That wasn't the path for me. And that took a long time to accept. That was part of me being mad at the world because I wanted that path, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to do with my life. But I realized my life, the trajectory of my life had changed. And two things needed to happen. One of two things needed to happen. Either you get on board with that or you live the rest of your life in misery. Yeah. Simple as that. OK, because this is what it was. OK. And so. In that pity party, because I was wanting to take the path that I wanted to take for a very long time, I was upset. Um, People probably loved you like that all the time. too. <laughs> probably easy to be around, right? No, I was not. <laughs> I was not at all. I was, I was horrible to be around. I had a nasty attitude. And that's the thing. I realized that was not serving me at all. All you know, and I was miserable because I was in a situation, but then I made it even worse because of my attitude around it. And my attitude was because I couldn't do what I wanted to do, I couldn't live the life I wanted to live, yeah. Right? And I started to, and I was mad, and I started to think about that situation and why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling, and what could I do to change it? What could I do at least to have a good attitude every day to make you know. Yeah, but, you know, you got to deal with this. You, you, you might as well, like, let's not be upset about it. How can we, you know, have a good attitude? And I started thinking about, you know, some what ifs types of scenarios. I mean, that's, that's really just how this all got started. I'm just going to be honest. It was just like, well, what if? Yeah. What if you could, you could just be happy today? What would it take for you to be happy for one day, Rodney? Well, I mean, what, what, would, it, what would it take to smile? Because I, I wouldn't smile. And I started thinking about, well, it would just take just, just, Letting, letting it go, just, you know, enjoying the moment, enjoying the birds, enjoying the sun that's shining on your face, enjoying uh, a, a glass of water, right? Even though you can't hold it yourself, you can still drink it, right? Enjoy the fact that you have a mind, you can, you can still think and imagine, like you could be dead. Uh, enjoy just being alive. Yeah. As bad as it is. And then that, I started to expand that thought further, honestly. And I started thinking, well, what if you were to recover? Like, that would be like ultimate happiness, right? What if you could overcome this? <laughs> and that thought was like, huh, you know? And then I said, well, that's, that, that's, that's a low probability, okay? And I'm having this conversation with myself. And, it's, and it was like, well, what if you were still in the chair, in this situation, but your mind allowed you to be successful? And I started to think, whoa, now that's pretty cool, right? Because, <laughs> all right, all right. That would feel really good, even though it didn't stop me. It didn't win because I was competitive because I played ball, right? And it's like, man, like that would be, I, I can live with that. I can do that. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to recover 
or die trying. Mm, yeah. That's it. And that changed the whole trajectory. And then I started thinking about how that would affect other people. And that gave my life a whole new meaning. Whole new meaning. And so that became my drive because then it wasn't just about me anymore. It was about the people that I could affect 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Right. Because I knew there weren't many people that had overcome this type of injury. Right. I was looking for someone. Dennis Bird was the only person that I knew from the Detroit Lions that was able to walk again after experiencing something like this. So I studied Dennis Bird and some of the things that he did and how he ate and, you know, the, some of the doctors that he had and some of the treatments that he got. And I said, OK, I don't have his money, but I'm going to I'm going to do this the, the best that I can. I'm going to talk to my therapist about this. And let's see if we can do this. And that's going to be the focus. I want to walk, period. And not only did I, you know, this process start to work with my body, but in my mind, you know, that's that's what a real work started to happen because my whole mindset changed towards recovery, towards what I was dealing with, and it became more meaningful to to recover. And I think, you know, going back to what you said, a lot of people quit after like I could have quit in year two, year three. I mean, the doctors were telling me after about five years, you shouldn't expect any recovery. We haven't seen any recovery. Right. And it was just this year that I'm bench pressing more than I ever had. You know, I'm, I've, I've done a 5K. I've done all kinds of stuff, you know, just this year. And that's been over 20 some years ago. Right. And it's because I have a meaning. That's the you said what, what drives me. It's not about me. It's about the difference or the impact that I can make on people that I can have on people. The difference that, you know, so many people have come up to me. And, and said, you know, even I'm walking on crutches and they say, you know, you make it worthwhile for me to get out of bed because I know if you can do it, I can do it. You make it worthwhile for, worthwhile for me to, you know, to, to, to go that extra step, that extra mile, because I know if you can show up every day as strong and, and, and ready, to, ready to, to go for it every single day, then why am I complaining? Right. And yeah. that makes it worthwhile to me. Oh, there's no doubt. Uh I'm thinking and bent uh, back a minute here. You talked about a few things here that made me think, but one of the, yeah, look out when you're making me think. That's bad news too. But uh, <laughs> you were, I know it's like beam. So you talked about um, some of these things that happen in your life, some of these these changes, this switch, this flip in your life. So about how old do you think you were when when that started to to occur? when you started to really drive into others and to, to think you can make those things how, I mean, all right. So you're young, 15, 16 year old, how long of a span of time was it before that really kicked in for you? Oh, it was one year, 16. I was 16 years old, 16. And, it, and it, I don't know, it sounds alarming, right? But let me tell you something. When you don't have anything else, we don't have anything else. The doctor said there's nothing else that they can do. There is no pill. There is no procedure. There is nothing else. Yeah, I know. When you're in that situation, you will start looking for something to anchor yourself in. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they anchor in the pill. They anchor in what the doctor said. They anchor in on what she said. They anchor in on what he said. They anchor in on what happened to someone else yesterday. But when you don't have any of that, Right. Yeah, I totally. I totally and I'm grateful that I was so young because I wasn't I was programmed, but I didn't have all that other junk like I'm too old. Right, right, right. You know, I, you know, I didn't have a lot of that. Yeah, a lot of that junk in my mind from all those years of believing all these limiting beliefs. I didn't hindrances. have that. Yeah. Hindrances. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so it was very I won't say it was easy, but. I was 16 and I was lying. I remember because I was lying in my in a, in a medical uh, bed, which is what I had to sleep in. And I went through that process in my head. And that was the better option for me. That was the better option. And I made that decision right there in my head that, you know, because when you're paralyzed, you know, and you don't know if you're ever going to be able to move again. You don't know if you're going to be able to give yourself a pick up a glass of water and drink it when you don't know if you're going to be like just that motion right there. You don't know if you're going to ever be able to do that. And this is my left hand. Like I, well, my, my right hand is my dominant hand, but I had to learn how to do that particular moment, that movement. And it took years. 
years just to do that. Mm. You're in that place when you can't do that. You cannot do anything. Right. You're just looking for anything that would make you smile, that can make you feel good, to work towards something that would be meaningful and valuable in your life. And so my now my recommendation for people that don't have that situation, because, yeah, I was in that in a situation where I had to start looking for that because everything was stripped away. But now we walk around and we have all of that and we take it all for granted. Right. And there's so many people that they don't have any meaning to their lives. Right. They don't value. They don't. They don't even know what their values are. They don't live their life by values. They just out there, and then they wonder why they don't feel like their life has a purpose, mm-hmm. or they feel like they want to accomplish things, but they don't have the drive. They're not motivated. Yes. And all they want is the material things. They want all this stuff, but and then they get certain things, and they realize that that doesn't have any, you know, much meaning, or the meaning is very short lived because it doesn't fulfill you. Because right, that's not why that's not what it's all about. Right. Right. It's about what can you do for others? What impact can you make? What purpose can you can you bring forward? What, why are you here? What can you do for the betterment and the sustainment of life in itself? And for me, that meant everything in the world because I had nothing else. But what I know, what I've learned is that that's that's the key to life, to happiness, to fulfillment. In life, yeah, it doesn't matter where you are or what you're going through. Whenever you have that as an anchor, you can get through anything. Mm-hmm. That'll get you up out of bed in, in the morning, even if you have to drag yourself out of bed. If you have to go in a wheelchair, if you have to go on crutches, you have to go in that raggedy car. If you have to live in that rundown home for a few years, if you only have ten dollars in your pocket, right? If you got cussed out the night before. If you if you got to deal with those same people that keep talking about you, you know what? Because you know that it's bigger than that. Your life is so much more. You have more to offer. You got things yeah. to do. You have a legacy to live. You got work to get done. And you won't let things like that, those trivial, trivial, meaningless things stop in the way. from bringing forth what it is that you have to bring forth. Yeah, brother. So I think we should pass the plate right about now. Because you're preaching, bro. <laughs> I'm trying. I try. You know me already, right? I'm trying just to sit here. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> you know, on the inside, I'm like, well, let me do the thing. <laughs> oh, private joke, y'all. But anyway, that's just, that's amazing, bro. I mean, you, I relate so much with what you're saying. That's my passion as well. And we both have two different angles as to, our thought process is there, um, but we both want the same outcome in people's lives. I just totally, totally understand what you're saying. Um, however, for those folks that are just listening now and they're just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing and Roddy's incredible and which you are, I think, uh, I don't think, I, I know for a fact you're the most inspirational man I've ever met in my life and I value the opportunity to know you uh, tremendously. Um, you know, what are some things that you're doing now that you talk about to be able to help people? I know you've written the book, Stand Up, or, I'm sorry, Get Up, which um, uh, is obvious, you know, the thought process behind what that would be in that book. And you talk about your processes and how probably to apply those in your life in the book. Um, so that's a very powerful tool, obviously. Uh, are there other things you do? Do you do, um, you know, um, you do keynote speeches, you speak, you travel. Uh, do you do any coaching? I mean, what, is, what are some of the ways that you can help people? Yeah, I mean, I obviously I have the books and uh, I do keynotes. Uh, I'm also a trainer. I'm a resilience trainer. So I, I train a resilience on, trainer. Yeah, I train people on, on, on how to be resilient, how to bounce back. Uh, and there's relentless and relentlessness and creativity, creative mindset that's also worked into that process as well. Uh, and I'm also a facilitator of speaking. So I help people that want to be more impactful on stage. Facebook, whatever it is that you want to do in front of people to be more impactful, share your story. I help people understand how to do that in a very impactful and engaging way. I think nowadays we don't have enough connection and engagement. People want to get in front of people and just talk to them, but we don't engage with them. And I work with people on how to build that relationship with your with your audience on stage. And so that is something else that I do as well. I, I, I have courses where I teach the get up process, the game changer mentality 
process uh, through my courses. And so two, uh, two things get up uh, as a course and game changes as a course is that two different courses. It's just one course game changes is, is worked in into that. Oh, we're okay. working on, yeah, we're working on separating and, and building a, a, a separate game changer mentality course. We don't, we don't have that just yet, but that's something that we're working on. So, they, so I have a podcast. You get up, you can do uh so it's a membership site you have. Is this a webinar uh, or is this, how does that work for get up the course? Yeah, no. So, so get up is, 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 is a, is a six week course, actually a nine week course. Um, and you can find it on my, my website, rodneyflowers.com. Okay. Uh, and I, I only teach it a few times a year. Um, and so game changer mentality is, is something that we're working on. We haven't quite developed the, the curriculum for that, but we work what we have, the things that we have with game changer mentality, we work that into the, the get up course. Okay. Oh, that's exciting. I want to do it. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to get up now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm also a, uh, a podcast host and uh, I do work with individuals one-on-one, which is, I really enjoy that. I like be getting personal with people and, and having that one-on-one interaction because um, it allows people to open up a lot more and we can really dig in and find out what's really blocking or hindering them. Deal with some of those, I don't want to call them demons, but just, just blocks that people yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. Rodney's been really working hard with me on trying to come out of my shell and I'm trying to be a little more energetic myself. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, all I can do, I'm restrained. This is your, I'm interviewing you today. So I'm trying to, trying to back off because man, you're so, you're so awesome in my creaky chair. I hate this thing. I'm going to have to get a new chair anyway. So in uh, another thought process. So man, I am super excited. It's rodneyflowers.com and there's lots of ways they can reach you and get a hold of you. Find out what your stuff is, is there. Um, you travel obviously. And uh, you know, if, if there's a person, well, there is. Let's just say we know there is. So somebody's out there right now that's listening to us, watching us right now. And um, maybe they're not paralyzed physically, but there is some sort of thing that they're now realizing through what you've just said, that they're probably paralyzed in some form or fashion in their life. Um, it took a lot for you. You said at 16 it happened, but then you also said there was a period of time that you were angry and there was another part of time where you said, this is it. I'm, I'm going for it, right? You, you did it. There's a lot of transitions in that period of time in your life. There's a lot of emotions, a lot of anger, fear, frustration, um, depression. Um, bro, I mean, I, could met, I knew a time where or during my, after I had brain surgery, it was the worst times of my life. And I fully understand how someone could consider committing suicide. First time in my life. Um, fully understood it because I, I was thinking about it <laughs> a lot. Um, never did. Thank God. Uh, I wouldn't, but I understand, right. As you do, I'm sure. So there's a lot of those emotions that people have. And let's just be honest folks that you're listening today. Be honest with yourself. If that's you and you're experiencing some of these things, some of these emotions, those thought processes, um, you cannot stay there. <laughs> And if there's anybody that can tell you how to get up, it's this guy over here. So, so can you speak to that person right now, Rodney? Your life is more than what you are going through. What you are going through is just a vehicle or stepping stone to get you to greater things. And right now, all you have to do is stop focusing on everything that's going wrong, everything that isn't right, and look at what's good and what's possible. It's very, very simple. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. You don't need a psychologist. You don't need any of that stuff. All you need to do is just focus on the things that are good in your life right now. And those things that are good can help you see what's possible. And that's what you want to focus on because that's just the things you're going to just negative energy, just trying to hold you down and keep you from your greatness. But your greatness is in those things that are good and what's possible. And when you can start focusing on those things, set your energy and your mindset, your day, your structure, your planning on what's possible and start working towards that. And all you need to do is just 
one little success a day. You don't have to be great overnight. You don't have to accomplish everything overnight. Take it day by day. And when you accomplish one thing, really appreciate and, and, and have gratitude for that one accomplishment. And then the next day, start out for something else. A little bit bigger. And then accomplish that. And get into the habit of igniting those small accomplishments. And over time, you'll find that you've come a long way. You're not in that dip anymore. You're far from that. And your focus is not on that. Let the past go. Get rid of all of those beliefs that you think are real in your life that, you know, you have to abide by that are, that are holding you down. Let all that go. Let it all go. Challenge those beliefs and start focusing on those beliefs that truly serve you, that make you feel good about who you are and what you have to offer. Get in tune with what you have to offer, your contribution. Understand and know your contribution. And if no one else believes that you can contribute that, that's okay. You believe it. You believe that. And you believe it with, and you, you don't have to share this. Believe it with everything that you have. If you feel that that's what your contribution is, and you go and you start giving that to people who can appreciate it, who need it, and you just keep doing that, and you will find that your life will change. And you, my friend, will get up. <laughs> that's so awesome. Thank you so much, Rod. It's been such an amazing journey here with you. And what an amazing man you are. What an amazing story. You could still be in a chair uh, if it weren't for the decisions you made. Uh, there's no doubt you'd still be in a chair or dead. Um, and I'm so grateful that you made a choice to get up. Very grateful. Thank you. For we all have a choice. We all have a choice. Absolutely. If, and if you are in that place and if you're continuing to be in that place, you have to take ownership of that. It's not the circumstances fault. It's not the situation's fault. It's not God's fault. It's not your mama fault. It's not your daddy fault. It's not anyone else's fault. Life happens, period, to everyone. Yeah. You are not exempt. Wherever you are, how bad it is, doesn't matter. It is what it is. But what makes the difference is what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. That's all on you. That's all on you. You have to make the decision that it's not going to kill me. It's not going to stop me. It's not going to keep me there. I'm still going to make a contribution. I'm still going to make a difference. I'm still going to smile. I'm still going to be happy. I'm still going to go. That's all you. That's what it takes. Every day. Every time. All day. All day. <laughs> That's right. All day. Every day. My God, yes, brother. <clears throat> All right, fantastic stuff. All right, RodneyFlowers.com is where they can reach you. Absolutely. And, uh, you're available, of course, you've got your own social media sites and whatnot, but all those links are available on your website as well. And if folks want to reach out to get you to come speak at an event or a clinic or workshop, they can reach you through the website there as well. And, um, of course, the course uh, information is available on your website there too. So folks, for sure, if that's something that, uh, that's really speaking to your heart today, <clears throat> you definitely want to get there as quick as you can. Another thing about that is, is to really learn how to respond because hesitancy uh, is, is, a, is an evil weapon in our lives and it can stop you from doing things that you're supposed to do. It can, it can rob you from greatness in your life. And uh, fortunately, this man has said yes and he got up. But Rodney has to do that every day. And he just said he recently just started benching more than he's ever benched in his life. Like recently, like, like not too long ago, right? <clears throat> Here we are years down the road and you're still pushing the envelope and there's still more to go. I mean, heck, I, I have no doubt in my mind there'll be a day I just see Rodney walking past me without a crutch. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. If it's going to happen to anybody, it's going to be this guy over here. For sure. And I just want to say, you know, don't let the circumstances of life dictate how you live your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't let the circumstances of life dictate how you live your life. Yeah. It's easy to get trapped into that identity of circumstance. I can totally understand. For me, with a guy with cancer, I could yield to the identity of cancer. And, and 
die, be weak, be weak minded, be all those things, uh, because cancer is is a cancerous, evil, vicious um, trespasser. And uh, it's no different. It's a cancer of the mind, even your situation, that it, it was a cancer of the mind or you chose to get up and get past. And that's, it's a choice, just like you said, obviously. Man, we could go on for hours, brother. This is so good. I really could. I mean, you know, I know, I know. you seems like you're getting towards the end of this thing. So I'm trying to keep it going. But, but I man, I can, I can just, you know, you know because I, I see it every day. You know, we all have goals and dreams. That yeah. we want to accomplish in life. And, you know, as I matured, you know, after I made that decision when I was 16, years later, it was reinforced by my sight of people that wanted to accomplish great things in life, but felt that those great things weren't for them. And what I mean by that is they would see the Michael Jordans and the Serena Williams and the, the, the the Obamas and all these great people in the world and all of these things that they've accomplished. And they will say, well, it's great for them. I said, well, you know, you can do that too, right? You, you can do that. Oh, nah, you know, that's not in my blood or I don't have that background. I can right. never do this. And I'm like, what makes you different from any other person? Name it. Background? Nah, it's just, you know, that doesn't, it matters, but it doesn't matter. It matters to the, to the extent that you allow it to matter. Right. Right. But you can do anything that the next person can do, right? If you see, you know, you can be the next president. You can be the next. Now, you can't do what Michael Jordan did because that's for Michael Jordan. But it doesn't mean that you can't do something that's great. Right. So what is your greatness, right? We don't need another Serena Williams because we already got it. We don't need another Barack Obama because we, we've already got that. But we may need another. We may need the Matt Crump. We need the Rodney Flowers. We need whatever your name is. We need that. And the problem with the world today is not, not what we have experienced. It's what we haven't experienced. Mm -hmm. As great as all the things are that we have experienced, the airplanes, the, the computers, the, the mini telephones, and all of these great things that people have produced, my question is, what about the things that we haven't seen because people Ooh, yeah. have not you know, brought that forward for it whatever could be reason. You. It could be you out there. It, it could be. be. It could be that one thing. We're like, oh, somebody finally did it. All it takes is doing it. Yep. We got to stop. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> <laughs> if you want more, y'all, rodneyflowers.com, mattcrump.tv, right? You can get, either way, you got two guys right here. We <laughs> absolutely love love to help you we both are very passionate about you uh, that's why i'm doing what i'm doing what he's doing what he's doing i mean we we just want this so bad that's why we could talk forever and it's so fun be between the two of us because we are so passionate about this and and this is you uh if it weren't for you i would probably be dead i know it uh mm. I, I have no other reason to exist i've already been told i should be dead um, I was told I was going to be dead. Uh, so same kind of thing with Rod. They said, you're never going to walk again. They told me I had eight months to live. So, I mean, when things like that happen, what do you do? Die? Give me a break. We're here to live. So live your life, folks. And uh, again, RodneyFlowers.com. And I'm super excited to introduce you all, those that don't know him. For those of you that do, you already know how awesome he is, right? So uh, check him out on site and uh, get up with him and uh, make sure that you do something incredible because there's a greatness waiting inside of you. For some of you that you're trying to act upon that greatness because you know what it is, but you're like, ah, then just keep going. Keep going. You're going to hear no a lot. <laughs> Say yes. All it takes is one yes, right? All right. Thanks so much again for being here today, Rodney. What a joy. What a blast. Let's talk about a hope reveal. We have revealed some hope today. And I'm so thankful uh, for you to be able to do that in your life. Your entire life is hope revealed. Thank you so much for being here, brother. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. I meant when I said that you're just the most inspirational guy I've ever met in my life. I don't know if ever done what you've done and still do what you do. I can relate to it passionately because, I mean, I have to deal with the same kind of thing every day. Um, I mean, 
I could have given up today. You know, I just, just isn't that something? And every day you is you're, you're faced with a reason to give up. I I, I'm, I'm so with you, man. I mean, some of the things that I've had to deal, like, still have to deal with. And imagine, right? I mean, yeah. But I push right through because yeah. you know it's like, yeah, come too far now. Yeah.